Hi, my name is Kristen. This is Kristen Craves Books. So I don't do book hauls that often, but my friends and family know that the perfect gift to give me at Christmas time is anything bookish to book related. Give me books, a book gift card, a book related item, a bookmark. I'm a happy gal. So that's what they did for me this year. And I'm just so lucky to have them in my life. They just know me so well. So I've got quite a few things to show you. So let's just dive right into it. Starting with a few books that I've already read. And the first one is A Song for the Wild Build by Becky Chambers. My parents know that this is one of my favorite books of the year and that I want to own all of Becky Chambers' books. So they bought me this one and it's so sweet. I love this cover so much and just the size of it. And I love Becky Chambers. I've talked about this book a lot in my last video of my favorites of the year. I mentioned this one so I'll just tell you briefly what it's about. It follows a tea monk and a robot and in this world robots rebelled against humans and they haven't been seen from in years and then this team monk decides to go on an adventure has an encounter with a robot and we're really just following their conversations and it's beautiful as all becky chambers books are very character driven very heartwarming love this book so much and the sequel comes out in 2022 and i can't, cannot wait for that and then the other one that was in my best books of the year video is the inheritance of ocradia divina by zoraida cordova this is a magical realism book, very witchy, but very much a family saga. It goes into places I wasn't expecting. We jump back in time to Arcadia's life as a child and how she grows up. It's really more emotional than I was expecting, and I was really moved by it and cannot wait to read more from this author. And I'm so happy to have, sorry, the window's reflecting on here. It's a very shiny cover. I'm so happy to have this on my shelf because it's not only a beautiful book inside, but look at that cover. So yeah thrilled to find that under the Christmas tree. And then if you are following my blog miss at all on my blog, I'll link that down below. There were lots of questions about the one book that I want to find under the tree on Christmas morning and this was the one. This is Laura Lempis Volume 1 by Rachel Smythe and I was so thrilled to find this. It's such a nice quality book. I know that this is a very popular webtoon and it really is just a graphic novel about the relationship between Hades and Persephone but it's so beautiful. I've never actually read a Hades and Persephone retelling before and I think I started with the best and I read this on Boxing Day morning and it was just so, so delightful and I just want to show you some of the spreads here because really the tones are just the blue and the pink and it works so well and I'm taking everything in me not to go online and read the rest of the webtoon but I do want to wait until the volume 2 comes out in July, I believe July 5th. So love this so much. I was so thrilled to receive this and to read it and it deserves all the hype that it's been getting. And then one that I actually wish I read before I picked up Laurel Olympus is this. This is Greek Mythology, The Gods, Goddesses, and Hero Handbook. This is by Liv Albert and the illustrations are by Sarah Richard. And this is a handy, handy book to have. It just goes through all the Greek gods, heroes, any sort of, anybody that's in the Greek myths, you really get a synopsis of them. And actually, Laura Olympus is referenced so much in this. Rachel Smythe gives some, I actually think she quotes on here, at least on the one copy I saw. Yeah, she says, a witty and unapologetic perspective on famous classical stories through a modern feminist lens. So they really get into why there's a lot of problematic gods, how problematic Zeus really was, which was really interesting, because I don't know much about the original myth. So if you're like me and you love Greek mythology retellings, but you're not as familiar with the original myths and everybody's stories, this is a good one. And honestly, look at these illustrations. They are stunning. So I feel like I will reference this a lot. And I want to show you the Hades and Persephone one just to give you an idea because it's so pretty. Here it is. Look how stunning that is. So the illustrations are gorgeous and I want to tab this. I'm going to reread it and tab it just to get the ones that I know that I'm going to have to reference often because I do want to read a lot of Greek myths in 2022. And then the one that I am currently reading and it's the perfect time of year to read this is A Certain Appeal and this is by Vanessa King and this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling set in Manhattan at a burlesque club. So Liz Bennett works at a burlesque club and Darcy is a patron there. 
and it's just so much fun. I'm not that far into it, but I knew five pages in that I was going to love this, that it was going to be a blast, and that is the experience I'm having. And doesn't this just scream New Year's? So I think this is the perfect book to be reading into the new year. I'm having so much fun with it. I do love a good Pride and Prejudice retelling, and this one is like none other that I have ever read before, so really, really enjoying that. And that is the only ones that I've read so far. So the next one I have here is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. And I know that this one is getting some mixed reviews, but something about it really appeals to me and I love anything witchy. And I, let's be honest, have you seen what it looks like under the dust jacket? Is that not gorgeous? Look at the details on that. So I just love that. And I know that seasons are a big deal on this and each of the witches is tied to different seasons but our main character is an ever witch and she is the only one that can perform magic throughout all the seasons and I think there's some climate change talk in here I'm just really intrigued by this one I have heard mixed things as I said but a lot of people really do love it so I have high hopes for it still then my best friend bought me a book it was the ballerinas of course he had to ask me which one that I wanted because he would never know on his own but this is by Rachel Kalpik Dale and I've been seeing this everywhere. I got a lot of buzz in December and I love any stories about ballerinas. So I don't really know too much about what this is about but I think there's a mystery here. I know that we're following three ballerinas I believe and in two different timelines when they were at the Ballet Academy and Friends and now years later where they have grown apart and I think something happened in the past and that's slowly revealed and I just love anything that talks about the dark side of ballet so really really looking forward to this definitely a january read for me now this next one is one my mom just picked up on her own and thought it looked like something i might like and i haven't seen this everywhere and it's a good morning america book club pick so i'm excited about this this is deva shatri's last day and honestly i don't know too much about this but it does appeal to me it says deva shatri one of the world's wealthiest women has always lived with her sterling reputation in mind a brain cancer diagnosis at the age of 70, however, changes everything, and Deva decides to take her death, like all matters of her life, into her own hands. So that sounds intriguing. I haven't read many books with older main characters like that, and I think this could be excellent. And I kind of just love that my mom picked that up on her own and thought that it would be something I like, and I think she could be right about that. Then here's one I've been wanting to read for years and years and never owned a copy of and I know that this is a lot of people's all-time favorite book and this is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ru Ruiz Zafin and I actually have the fourth book, The Lame Labyrinth of Something because I found that really cheap for a really cheap price so I do want to read this. It is intimidating. The writing's small. It's about 400 and something pages but I know that this is so well loved and I've been wanting to get back into more literary books like this so I hope I do find the time to read it in 2022 but I'm just so happy to finally have it on my shelves for when the mood strikes. I wanted to collect all of Louise Erdrich's books even though I've never read anything by her just because I have a feeling I'm gonna love her stuff so uh, so far I only had The Night Watchman and then I also now have The Plague of Doves and this cover is so stunning. I love the size of this book and the spine here and I also want to pick up this sentence and then I will read those three before I buy any more. But I just, I'm recommended Louise Erdrich's books all the time, even by the storyograph. And I just know I'm going to love them. So it's excited to receive this one. And I also have this manga of Jane Eyre. I have read the Pride and Prejudice version of this and I really, really loved it. So I'm excited that they have other classics like this. So here's the Jane Eyre one. It's all done in black and white but it's just really fun and if you're a fan of Jane Eyre I think that you will love this format because I Pride and Prejudice is, is one of my favorite classics and I adored reading it in this way and then speaking of classics I got the last three books in the Thomas Nelson seasons editions that I needed to complete my collection these are the fall ones I already had Dracula so the last three needed were um, Shakespeare and Autumn so I know that Romeo and Juliet's in here and Midsummer Night's Dream, As You Like It, some sonnets, The Twelfth Night. So I'm really excited about this. Look how gorgeous these are. It's die cut. It's hard to see with the protective covering in here, but these are limited edition. Oh, Tammy and the Shrews in here as well. So this is actually, there's 10,000 out here, and this is actually copy 949, which is pretty cool. So excited about that one. 
And then in the other editions, the spring, summer, and winter, I believe there's a Jane Austen one in each of those. So I have Pride and Prejudice, I think Northgate, Anger Adley, maybe Mansfield Park, but this one is Sense and Sensibility, which is exciting, gorgeous. So love that. And then I'm so happy that they did Anna Green Gables. It's interesting that they would do Anna Green Gables in the fall, I guess because she loves Octobers. So that's really sweet and just beautiful as well. So I think they're done with these editions and I just love having them on my top shelf. I'm going to do a full bookshelf tour in the new year so I will show them all to you then. And then Schitt's Creek is my comfort show. I actually got a pop figure of David Rose for Christmas, which is so cute. And actually my dad discovered Schitt's Creek when it was still on season one, because we are in Canada. And I've always loved Dan Levy. If anybody is from Canada and you watch The Hills, you will know The Hills After Show. I only watch The Hills so I could watch Dan Levy on The Hills After Show. But yeah, I just love that show so much. I love Dan Levy. So I was excited to receive this coffee table book. It is Best Wishes, Warmest Regards. So really, it's just all about the behind the scenes of the show, but look at the end pages. They're so cool. There is Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara, and then here we go. So aren't they so cool? And then there's illustrations throughout, photos from the show. Just uh, It'll be fun for me to flip through this, and I cannot tell you how many times I have watched this TV show, and I know I'm not alone on that. That show really blew up in 2020. And then my mom knows I like these little people big dream books. They're kids books, but they're fun for me. I have a Jane Austen one. I think I have a Mary Shelley. So I now have Elton John. So these are just kid books. But look at the end pages on these. They're so cute. And just about famous people. So it's Elton John's story in a kid's book form, which I just think is so adorable. Rocket Man is one of my favorite movies. So we love that. And then I also have Andy Warhol, who is somebody I've always liked, even as a kid. I was always about Andy Warhol for some reason. So here are the chicken soup on the end pages. And then we just get pictures from his life. So I just think these are so fun. They're pretty affordable. And I think they would be great for kids as well. But this one sounds like it's kind of falling apart, but I think it's okay. And yeah, there's a lot of famous people and interesting people and scientists and things like that. So if you find these, they make for great gifts. Then my best friend also got me to, here's his card, got me to um, children's books. This one is The Office, A Day at Dunder Mifflin Elementary. So that is hilarious. The Office is up there as one of my favorite TV shows as well. Look at the end pages. I just think children's books can be so cute. So really it's about what would happen at an elementary school if the characters if the children there were the characters from the office and i think that's so adorable so yeah if you're a fan of the show this is a cute one and then he also got me the friends version so it's different illustrators but here are the end pages as well and yeah it's just about <laughs> joey doesn't share food so it's just about friends and it's so cute i'm so excited to have both of those so we're almost done with the books i just have the bibliophile diverse spines i have the original version and this one is the latest edition this who does these jasmine harper and jane mount so i know that this is popular on instagram and it's just illustrations of stack of book recommendations this might actually be fun for a video to choose one of these stacks and maybe read some of the books from there that might be something i do in the future but i love that it's diverse there's some interesting books in here some of my favorites there's a section for kids books and actually there are recommendations from bookstagrammers in here, some who I follow and I'm familiar with, so that is really fun. And then I also received the reading journal that goes along with it. So this is the Bibliophile reading journal and I am determined to keep a reading journal next year. I always say that, but I really would like to, so it's just simple, it's just, see if I can zoom in there, no it's bright. So it's just got a place for the title, the author, plot notes, character notes, favorite quote, and other books to read by this author and you can put the start date finish date and rate the book and then just to some fun, fun illustrations throughout so i thought that was cute let's see a fun way to track your reading so that is all of the books and now i just have a few bookish items so no stocking is complete without some bookmarks so i received these three this says pride and prejudice see if i can get it to load there there we go Pride and Prejudice, 
The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And Great Expectations. So, yeah, those are so cute. And I love that they're like this leather and I've been using them all the time. Of course, I had to run around and try and find all three of these for this video. They were all, all over the place. And then this bookmark is actually from Anthropology, and it's the cutest thing ever. It's just a metal, gold metal bookmark, but it is a cat wearing a sweater and has a ball of yarn. And I'm in love with this. It is the cutest thing ever. And then for book journaling, I actually got this printer. I think this is just from Amazon. And it's got this paper in it that's actually stickered. It's got adhesive on the back. And they just print black and white photos, but I figured it'd be fun to print book covers out from this just from my phone and stick it in the reading journal so that is fun and it never runs out of ink just you have to replace the paper but I also received a lot of the paper so I thought that was a great little gift and a fun way to maybe motivate me to continue to keep a physical reading journal so I love that thing and then my brother and his girlfriend got me perfume they always give me perfume she actually works at the perfume department at Sephora so this one is by Rado. This is Bibliotech. So she got, I think she got me a one that smells like paperbacks in, in the past and she knows that I like any perfume that has patchouli and this one definitely does. So let me show you the packaging. It's so elegant. There you go. So this actually smells exactly like you would picture. Oh it's so classy. It's so nice. And it's got such staying power, but it's a, it does it is a bookish smell. I can't even put it into words. So I love that and how the cap just goes on. Like this is such a nice gift. So I was thrilled to receive that. She said she's been wanting to get me that for years. So that is so nice. And last but not least, I just have a few clothing items. Here's this T-shirt, and obviously it has Belle on it, and it says my weekend is all booked. So that is just a good lounge shirt. You'll probably see that in a lot of videos in the future, as well as this one here. It it just says one more chapter. So I love that. And then this sweater I actually wore in my last video and it's from Out of Print and it is mini reading a book. So that is the cutest thing ever. And it's actually so cozy. I'm gonna wear that so many times. So you might get sick of seeing me in that, but I just love it. So those are all the books and bookish related gifts I have received for Christmas. I am so grateful and I'm so grateful to all of you. I am nearing 500 subscribers, which is just wild to me. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for watching, for commenting, for liking this video, for subscribing, and for all the support this year. This is my last video of 2021, so we will see you in the new year. Bye for now.